All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Guitar Arsenal. Um, today, we're going to be discussing uh, this particular Gibson amp here. Um, this is a Gibson Minuteman. It's a 20-watt model. Um, this one's made in the late 60s. And the reason I'm making this video is to kind of show you that a lot of people get into vintage gear and they want to buy like a vintage amp or a vintage pedal or vintage guitar and sometimes a lot of a lot of amps and especially amps seem to be like out of the price range of a lot of average people and uh, you know you look at a, a similar uh, Fender to this particular Gibson here and Fender amps are obviously a lot more sought after and uh, they're also a lot more expensive uh, I picked this particular amp up for 250 bucks so you can find vintage amps. You can get a good deal on them. You can find decent deals. Uh, they are out there. And I just thought that I would showcase this particular amplifier. Uh, this is one that's kind of a uh, kind of a tool in the collection. Uh, I mean, I have other amps. Like, I, I mean, there's a 71 Marshall over there. There's a Mesa Boogie Mark V. There's a 120 watt Koch back there. Uh, I mean, I've got a Fender Champ over there. Fender, you know, Bass Breaker. A couple of small combo amps. Uh, closed back, uh, you know, head style amps that use like 150 watt head or, you know, 50 watt head, 100 watt head, that sort of thing. This is nice because it's a, it's kind of, it's a vintage piece, but without having to spend a ton of money. Um, these amps as a whole were not really all that successful. And uh, I was running an overdrive right there in the intro to play, uh, kind of butcher some REM for you there. Um, but these amps, um, they don't really break up. Uh, they're very, very, very clean, no matter how loud you crank them. Uh, they have headroom for days. So this is a type of amp that wasn't really successful. You know, a lot of people wanted an amp that you could, you know, crank uh, a small wattage amp and at lower volumes get that kind of like breakup. But here, I'll just demonstrate. Um, no effects, no nothing. Okay. This is just straight amp, and uh, I'm using a 52 uh, Telecaster Custom Shop uh, Fender here. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna crank it up, and you hear how it sounds completely cranked. Now, if headroom's what you want, which by the way, it's not volume, it's loudness. We are jumping the inputs. Okay, that way we're we're using both volume controls in the normal and the reverb uh, section. This amplifier is 20 watts, uh, uses, I believe, 6v6 valves, okay? You've got a normal input with the high and low gain, loudness, treble, bass. On the uh, reverb section, you've got loudness, treble, bass, reverb, and then you have a tremolo. Now, one of the reasons I scored this amp so cheap is the tremolo doesn't work on it, but it's not really much of an amp review, is it, if you can't hear the tremolo? But that's not really what it's meant to be. It's not intended really to be an amp review. This is more of a, hey, this is a kind of deal you can score. If you're looking for a vintage amp and you just kind of want that old school vintage sound and you don't want to spend a ton of money, the deals are out there. And I just want to kind of make this video for that purpose to let people know they're out there. All right, so this is the amplifier completely cranked. Okay, this is as loud as it will go. up a little bit but for the most part really 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 clean headroom um, let's switch to the neck pickup and just see what kind of sounds we can get and it's just straight in the amp no effects no nothing kind of hard it breaks up a little bit an amplifier like this where in my opinion where they really shine is to break off that volume just a bit set your EQ on the amp where you want it which in this case I've kind of got it where I kind of where I want it 
And then add some stomp boxes. This is a great platform for just adding a bunch of pedals and sort of driving the front end of the amp to get the kind of sound you want. So like with my pedal board, I mean, I'll run like a little bit of compression and an overdrive. And the amp doesn't naturally break up a lot like some of the older fenders do. And well, a lot of fenders, you know, have a nice level breakup in these smaller combos. But um, you can drive the front end of the amp and use the volume control on the guitar and sort of just get these kind of cool sounds, which in my opinion are kind of neat. So like we take, you know, we add, add a little bit of reverb, a splash of delay, uh, an overdrive, a little compression, just sort of build up a, a sort of tone block there. And... <coughs> Okay, not bad. Not bad. Um, let's add the Univibe and just kind of play around with that a little bit. And guys, I'm just trying to give you an idea how you can sort of like build up a sound you like uh, with an amplifier like this. This is a cheap amp. I did not pay a lot of money for it. I mean, the tremolo doesn't work, guys. I mean, come on. It's, I did not pay a ton of money for this thing. And it, it's just sort of to give you an idea of what a cheaper vintage amplifier. I mean, there's a reason that, that Gibson's not known for making amps. I mean, I'm not saying their amps aren't good, because they are. I mean, this is a pretty good sounding little amp for what it is, especially for the price. And that's kind of what I want you to keep in the back of your mind, is for the money. You know, this thing is generating some pretty decent tones. It can be good um, bedroom practice amp if you just want something to plink around on. It's not going to cost you a ton of money to get into. I mean, this is even cheaper than a modern tube amp. And really, even some of the modern fenders, the way they're constructed, it's probably not even made as good as this. We'll get into that in a second. The construction on these older Gibsons, one thing, if you are going to look at one of these, is to make sure that, you know, all the wiring is good because if you pull the back off one of these and look in there, it's just a bird nest of random, cruddy, cheap wiring, and it's kind of questionable, and you just really have to make sure that, you know, let them warm up, listen to them good, make sure they don't develop any weird sounds when you're in the store looking at them or if you're demoing them in somebody's house, you're going to buy it from them. Warm the amp up, make sure it's not making any hissing or racket, and that's kind of a vintage amp thing anyway. Because sometimes as those tubes warm up, they'll start to develop these kind of weird microphonics that you can get, and it can really affect the sound of the amp. So um, here's with the Univibe. Let's just have a little fun with this uh, a little bit here. <laughs> Pretty sloppy playing, but you know, kind of is what it is. Let's add a uh, you know, caprid fuzz. <laughs> And look, 
for an inexpensive amp that you can take out to a gig and beat up on, it doesn't really matter, especially if you're looking for that kind of old school, kind of warm and fuzzy sound when you're pushing stomp boxes into the front end of it, it's, it's a great platform for that. And see, the thing is, yeah, the tremolo doesn't work, but if you don't use the tremolo, well, mine doesn't work. Let me specify. I mean, if you find one of these amps, chances are yours probably works, but mine doesn't. Yeah. Not bad. That's with a little bit of distortion, you know, just running the caprid fuzz, univibe, you know, a few odds and ends through it. Not a terrible clean tone, uh, you know, and we have to give credit where it's due now. I mean, guys, there's a reason why Fender Princetons and Fender Deluxes and a lot of the old school Fenders capture our imagination so much when it comes to guitar playing because they're such wonderful pieces of hardware and they, um, they just respond to you in a, in a much different way than, than some of these amps do, but if you're if you're a budget-minded vintage purist and you want you know a vintage piece that is not going to break the bank, look at some of these Gibsons. You know um, they're they're out there. They're affordable. Look at some of the vintage solid-state Voxes. Uh, you know you may not be able to afford an AC30, uh, but you may be able to pick up a Vox Pacemaker or something like that, or or one of the older school uh, you know solid-state Voxes, which sound really really good and is still a nice old school amp with like the Bulldog speakers in them. They're really, really good amps for what they cost. Uh, you know, looking at some of the old vintage uh, Supro amps and some of the vintage Magnetones, they're out there. Prices on those have gotten a little bit higher, and that's mainly just because, you know, Magnetone is now making amps again, or somebody, I guess, bought the name and is making the amps again. But, you know, a lot of the vintage amps, people are catching on to them. And I think that a lot of people are kind of, like, tired of crappy quality of the newer stuff. I mean, unless you buy some hand-wired amp, like for instance, if you buy a you buy a Lazy J amp, okay, wonderful amps. They, in fact, they're like some of the best, as far as I'm concerned, some of the best sounding tweed amps in the world. But they're going to cost you a pretty good bit of money. But it just comes down to what you're willing to spend and what you want to do with an amplifier like this. Some of us uh, kind of tone hounds that really like to chase different tones, having amplifiers in the arsenal that can kind of do different things. That's why we have a guitar arsenal. It's why you have different amps and guitars so you can get different sounds. Something you're hearing in your head, something you want to do if you're recording and you want to lay down a specific thing. An amp like this, wrap the knobs all the way around, stick some mics on it, and you can just get those kind of big sparkly sounds. And, you know, like if I, if I crank this thing again, and I don't know, here I am just trying to think of what, what an example of that would be. But if you're talking, um, let's just say... All right, we've got it. We've got it cranked. The amplifier's cranked back up. Let's roll out some of this tone. 
and just see if we how it sounds just sort of rolling out sort of like a tune but you get the point let me uh, let me tune up all that bending's got me all wiry here intermission <laughs> yeah that that e i think i hit it and bent it a little bit sharp earlier all right Let's try that again, but maybe with the bridge pickup. See if we can get a little bit of sparkle out of it. Too bad, very sloppy playing, but blues is supposed to be sloppy, it's okay. Anyway, I mean, that just kind of gives you somewhat of an idea. I mean, it's not up to par of a Fender, in my opinion, but it's also like a fifth of the price, if not cheaper than a Fender in that regard. So, anyway, uh, guys, not to, to drag on, but that's just to, to give you an idea of what the little amp's all about. Uh, we've got the amp cranked, the maximum volume. Let's add uh, the overdrive back in and uh, Let's just make a little racket here, going out. Not terrible. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.